Hello, welcome today. Uh, my name is Sean Shattuck. I'm with the Acton Fire Department. I've been with the department for about seven years. Uh, I'm a firefighter here in District 1. We're out of 7 Concord Road. Today uh, I'm going to introduce you to uh, one of our newest engines, Engine 21. Uh, just some quick history on the truck. Uh, the truck was built and manufactured by Seagrave Apparatus out of Clintonville, Wisconsin. The truck usually takes about nine months from start to finish by the time we establish a truck committee, meet, decide what we're going to put on the truck, the configuration of it, and so on and so forth. Um, and from that whole time, it takes about nine months, the truck comes in. We have to do training through the four groups. We do a four group system here, group one, two, three, and four. And once the truck is all um, up to date with all the equipment, and all the groups are trained, we move forward and we put the truck in service and it begins to uh, serve the town of Acton. So welcome and uh, we'll get the tour started. So as I mentioned, this is a 2018 Seagrave Marauder 2 chassis. Um, it's engine 21 in the town of Acton. Uh, I'm gonna start with the front of the truck here. We have a basic front of a fire truck. We have the lights at the top. We have a spotlight here which helps us light up the scene, especially at night when we have uh, car accidents, uh, building fires, even simple alarm activations or service calls. Helps us uh, illuminate the scene and kind of uh, so we can see better what's going on. We do have a line here in the front of the truck. This is called a trash line or a bumper line. It assists in quick deployment of a hose. We can use this for a quick trash fire, um, a vehicle fire, and it repacks just in this compartment here. So this is for a quick deployment and something that we can use one line of hose on. Kind of a smaller incipient fire. So we can close that there. Um, we have a siren here as well, as many of you know. Uh, this is a Federal Q siren. It assists us in uh, moving through traffic safely and efficiently. Um, and as we pretty much go through traffic, we have uh, our lights on as well. And the general rule is uh, for the drivers to stay to the right. So as we come around to the side of the truck here, this is the driver's compartment, which we'll go into after. Basic layout with the driver's uh, seat here, the steering wheel, all the lights can be controlled, the scene lights on the outside, and it's a five person cab, so it allows us to take five people, whether it's in town or if we get a request for mutual aid for service out of town, uh, we can take up to five people with us. Each seat, as you will see, has a SCBA, which is a breathing apparatus, which just allows us to go into hazardous and smoke filled environments. There's a basic air cylinder, and then there's a face piece attached to the SCBA. As you come along here, we have our pump panel. This controls everything we do to get water out of the truck. So we have two lines here. These are called cross lays or matadales. They're 200 feet long. They're used for basic fire attack. Um, when it goes to inside a house, or if we have to do some type of outside brush fire, we can pull these lines. So these are 200 feet, they're pre-connected, and they're operated on here just by simply pulling a lever. We have um, just other wrenches here to loosen and tighten all the fittings on the pump. It's a 750 gallon tank, which has a 1500 gallon per minute pump and a 30 gallon foam system, which our foam system is controlled by right here so we can uh, extinguish class A and class B fires utilizing this foam. And there's some basic lights here too. If for some reason that you wanna put some lights on outside that you don't wanna go back in the cab for, you can do it all right here. Front, left, and right, rear. In the event you need to activate the air horn, that red button there will activate the air horn and that's used for uh, firefighter safety. If uh, for so, some reason we're getting low on water or conditions start to deteriorate, then we will hit the air horn and um, get the people out of the building. Right here, this is a pump compartment for the uh, pump operator. 
So additional fittings, we have supply line, attack line. So the bigger the hose, the more water you can put through it obviously, and the smaller hose we use for smaller, ho fi smaller fires such as brush fires. And then there's nozzles here as well. So if for some reason we need to attach another line or if one of the nozzles breaks, we can take that nozzle off and put this one back on. And these are just some basic connections that we use to connect larger hoses to smaller hoses. We have a generator as well, a generator on the truck. So basically at a fire, when a house is on fire, one of our priorities is just to shut the utilities off to the house. By shutting the utilities off to the house, we need power now to make scene lighting, uh, run additional tools. So we have a generator here which can be put on by a switch in the cab and we can run additional extension cords, like I said, lights and tools to help um, extinguish the fire, obviously by seeing better. Right here as well, there's two compartments here. These are for additional bottles. These are air cylinders for our SCBAs. So if we run out, these are 30 minute cylinders that we use at 4,500 PSI. So they're rated for 30 minutes, but realistically, when you're working and breathing more than just um, standing here, they're gonna be probably 15 to 20 minutes. So you're gonna get a reduced amount of minutes. This compartment here, uh, the fire department does respond to motor vehicle lockouts and house lockouts as well. This big easy red Alright, so once we undo this uh, cover here, we can get into stuff that will allow us to help get into your vehicle or your house. So if you do, people do locks, lock their children in their vehicles, um, we are called for that. And this is just some of the tools we use to get in the vehicle. Uh, our RIT equipment here, uh, so RIT in the fire service is Rapid Intervention Team. It's for firefighter safety. Uh, unfortunately, through the events of the Worcester Six, um, there was not as much um, firefighter safety RIT teams established or known about then. So uh, through those unfortunate events, we've become a lot more involved with firefighter safety at building fires. So this is for us pretty much. Uh, this is a bigger, a larger uh, cylinder. It's an hour long cylinder versus the 30 minute cylinders we use in the trucks. Um, if we have to rescue a firefighter inside, down firefighter, they're going to follow certain procedures. We're going to use this rope bag to tie off outside a house and then create a four-man team to go locate the down firefighter all on this rope. And then we're going to connect them to the RIT, um, the RIT package here, which will essentially aid us in getting additional teams in and out of the structure. Hopefully we never have to use this. This is a um, high-rise pack, it's called, so for uh, larger buildings, schools, uh, as I look across the town hall, uh, larger apartment buildings. This is connected by Velcro straps, and it has a nozzle on it. It can connect to what, they, what we call uh, building standpipes, um, or fire department connections inside buildings um, that are hundreds of feet, maybe even yards inside a building. Uh, to get to that fire that our regular lines wouldn't ordinarily uh, be able to uh, reach. So this just let, gets us a little further in the building and um, can extinguish fires as well. Uh, that's an inch and three quarter hand line which is similar to the inch and three quarter hand line um, at the, on the pump panel. The rear compartment here. So basically what we have here, uh, we have a hydrant bag. So when we pull up to a hydrant, there are certain connections we need to get water out of the hydrant. Um, so there are certain connections we need to get water out of the hydrant to the truck to supply water to the truck. 
and essentially um, 750 gallons of water on this truck goes pretty quick so it's important that the incoming second due engine companies pick up the hydrant and use this assortment here to get water out of the hydrant to the truck using LDH which is large diameter hose. So that's a hydrant bag that gets left at the hydrant. Uh, some other, we have a toolbox here just for basic, just basic tools. Uh, if we go to a car accident we have to disconnect a battery. The toolbox aids in that. Um, if for some reason we need to just miscellaneous uh, tools to maybe for forcible entry, uh, we can always use our toolbox here. It's full of uh, all the wrenches, adjustable wrenches, pliers, all that good stuff. Um, and then we have this is called the hydrant assist valve we use to um, boost the pressure at pliers if need be. So if there's certain pressure coming out of a hydrant and we need to get more water. We can use this, we can put this in line uh, to get more pressure and more gallons per minute um, to the fire essentially. Uh, due to certain, some areas of town have no hydrants, uh, some areas of town, most of the town I'd say probably 80%, that's just a guess, has hydrants. That being said, um, sometimes we'll have to call tankers, other times we'll be able to use hydrant water. So the hydrant assist valve helps us. It gets us more water in times where the pressure might be low or the gallons per minute might be low. Uh, so this is uh, just our fuels for our chainsaws here, spare chain. This is safety equipment for our chainsaws. Uh, so chainsaws, uh, we're an all-purpose, all-hazards response team. We use chainsaws at fires, um, so if we need all this the superheated gases rise in the, uh, in the structure. It's all gonna go to the ceiling, goes to the roof, goes to the attic. It's all gonna gather in, uh, at the top of the building. We're gonna need a chainsaw. So we, uh, we call it vertical ventilation. Opening up is a term that's used. And by creating a technically uh, like a four by four, six by six hole on top of the building where the fire is located, it lets all those superheated gases and flames escape, which in turn, reduces the temperature inside the building, hopefully, and allows the incoming, the incoming crews into the building extinguish the fire. By, it makes it, the uh, environment safer for them by lowering the temperature and letting those superheated gases escape. This right here is a blitz fire. Uh, this is new to the department. This is our first one. This comes off the truck and it supplies, so this is called stack tips and there's different size tips obviously the smaller the tip the less gallons per minute that comes out of it but the higher the um, the larger the opening the more gallons per minute that comes out of it so that can be used in um, say if you need to call the set it forget it so if you have a large fire if you have a hazardous atmosphere and you don't want to put any firefighter in uh, danger you can use this blitz fire set it up open it up and then it automatically just will flow water um, so that's um, allows us to do that at big fires if it's if you have a large fire that's going to be um, going for a long time then we're going to uh, set this blitz fire up set it and forget it and just let the water go uh, go and extinguish the fire so that's that for that compartment So we have, we carry all different sizes of hoses on the truck. So this is what they call the hose bed. So um, this hose bed, so we carry four inch hose, which is a supply hose from the hydrant to the truck. We carry inch and three quarter hose, which we mentioned before and we carry two and a half inch hose which can be used as supply hose or a tack line depending on um, the, the strategy of the fire, um, how the incident commander determines he's going to attack the fire. So there's 400 feet of inch and three quarter, there's 400 feet of two and a half, and there's 1400 feet of the four inch hose. These compartments open by this cover on top and right here you'll see these these black hoses here, these suction hoses, um, these can be used in what we call drafting. So for areas that do not have a 
uh, hydrant. We can find the local uh, pond, lake, stream, river, and we can drop these in there with a strainer at the end to kind of filter out all of the, uh, the rocks, debris, so it doesn't get in our pump, and then create a vacuum into the truck. Essentially, that's our water supply instead of a hydrant, and that's using these black hoses. We have one here, and then one to your left right there. So um, they can, like I said, they're great in uh, areas with no hydrants because we have to find water, we have to be creative. So that's, that helps us in that aspect. Uh, right here, so with anything, um, it fires, you're gonna need ladders. Ladders can uh, let you, you can run a hose line up a ladder. If you have to get up into the second floor, you can rescue people with ladders. So we have a 24 foot extension ladder here, which is good for your basic two and a half story wood frame house. It can reach the first and second floor. And then when you're climbing up the 24 foot extension ladder, you can use this roof ladder as well. So pull the roof ladder up and then you, these hooks, these hooks allow you to hook the ladder on the top of the roof, on the peak of the roof. So you, if you, like I said before, when we're using the chainsaw, you can essentially put the 24 foot extension ladder up against the building, pull up your roof ladder, and then if you need to vent the roof, you can do that. You can work off this roof ladder. And then you just push in. Right here, we, uh, we do EMS calls as well with the fire engine. Um, so Acton operates on, across three districts, the center district, the south district, and the west district. The primary ambulance is housed out of station one at the advanced life support level. The secondary ambulance, rescue 33, is housed out of Station 2, South Acton. Um, so depending on where the medical emergency is, you get that district engine, so either 21, 22 in South, or 23 in West, and the ambulance. That being said, if District 2 or District 3 has a medical, that engine goes, and that means everyone on the department is um, an EMT at minimum, basic, so they can start, uh, start providing EMS care. So we have an EMS compartment we're gonna talk about, we have this long backboard here, uh, which helps us at car accidents, uh, for extended falls from maybe a tree or a ladder. Uh, so this is just part of the EMS equipment we use to uh, aid in um, just making the scene safer for everybody and taking the, up, the utmost care um, and patient care. And uh, that way when the ambulance does get there, we already have a set of vital signs done um, and we've done some sample history as well. And if they need to go on this backboard, there's uh, straps and head blocks as well we use to keep uh, C-spine maintained so uh, we don't create any uh, spinal injuries. We have these uh, hooks. So we have a six foot and a 10 foot hook here. So these right here, these can be used uh, when you have a fire you can use these to either open up a ceiling, open up a wall. It's pretty much what they call checking for extension. Uh, when there's a fire and it does good into the wall, we have a thermal imaging camera we use, which I'll, we'll be talking about. And uh, that can show us where the seat of the fire is if we can't see it from outside of the wall. And then using these poles um, and hooks, we can either pull down the ceiling or uh, open up the wall if need be. These come in different sizes. Like I said, we have a six foot and a 10 foot hook. And another ladder here. This is a small 10 foot ladder. It's a folding ladder. And it gets us in spots uh, that are pretty small and hard to access. So you'll hear it say, get the, uh, get the pencil ladder, the folding ladder. There's a couple different terms for it. But it kind of gets us in spots that the larger ladders wouldn't be able to access. Um, we carry, so each of the three engines are equipped with extrication equipment, commonly known as uh, the Jaws of Life. So there's a spreader and a cutter here. So this is a spreader if we need to spread doors, roofs, dashes, and then we have a cutter here 
in which this handle is equipped with flashlight, I'm sorry, with lighting technology here. And this handle allows you to rotate if you need to uh, get the cutter in a unique position. It allows you to do so. Um, what I can say about these, uh, these are hydraulically operated with a pump, an internal pump here, and they're battery operated as well. This is the first purchase of the battery operated extrication tools from uh, the Acton Fire Department. Before we had a generator powered, which connects with 100 foot hydraulic lines, and then you're pretty much, can only go 100 feet. Battery power technologies um, increasing across the fire service. And this allows us to take these wherever we need to go. So you just push the battery power button here, and then you can take these wherever you need to go. So we're not limited to 100 feet. So you can go, if we need to go down an embankment, if we need to go in someone's house, if someone's stuck in a crib, uh, whatever we need to do, we can do. They're a lot quieter, they're cleaner, and they can go for approximately 50 cuts and they're just all around um, they're a great tool to have they cut with the same strength and force that the ones do on the other equipment as well um, with the generator power and we have some other basic stuff here we have some cribbing here in case we have to uh, secure vehicles from rolling or uh, tipping and we have a windshield saw here if for some reason some reason we need to access a patient out the front windshield or the rear window uh, we can break that obviously by having one person in with the patient to tell them what's going on to uh, keep them calm and uh, would use this to cut the windshield and then we we'll take precautions with blankets and such to make sure that it's the safest as possible while we extricate that patient. So this is a handy tool uh, to have. All right. Clean that up after. All right. So this is kind of our equipment cabinet here. Um, so basically we have axes, um, halligans, we have bolt cutters here, and we have a door spreader here if we need to spread the door jam to gain access to either an apartment or a house, we can use that. And then right here, common, it, um, accidents is fluids so when someone hits someone else usually uh, there's fluids uh, that we have to control uh, we have if there's a battery uh, that needs to be disconnected so it doesn't arc out and create a fire hazard we disconnect the batteries uh, we stabilize the car which i'll show you some vehicle stabilization uh, struts that we have so there's a lot to do in an accident and that's pretty much the speedy dry here we uh, create just basic four or five gallon buckets of speedy dry. That's all it is. That way we can control the fluids so they don't run down any drains or anything of that nature. And then obviously shovels, uh, especially in the winter time, if we have to dig out a hydrant, uh, always handy to have. And then we have a big large pry bar here if we have to open up a hood, if we have to gain access to a vehicle, um, help, that helps with that. This right here, this uh, blowhard fan, so this is new technology as well. Uh, that's Acton's first purchase of one of these fans. So it's a battery powered fan and it comes off the truck. It can run for 20 to 25 minutes on the battery power. And instead of pulling a cord off the truck, plugging it into the fan now we can just carry that fan the battery is an internal battery and we set it up at the front door and it's called positive pressure ventilation we blow fresh air into the structure and we create an exhaust port either on the first or second floor so whether it's burnt food if it's a building fire 
uh, whatever the uh, whatever the gas is that needs to be um, extricated from the house, we can evacuate that uh, through that exhaust port. So we can bring this inside the house because it's battery powered. It's not going to leave any exhaust, um, any fumes in the house to make it unsafe for the homeowners. So um, it's pretty handy. Um, only one person can, needs to carry it to set it up. It's not that heavy. Uh, when we have limited manpower in this department as we do, um, you got to uh, do the best you can with what you have. So that's that. So this compartment here, uh, we try to set all the trucks up the same. So uh, we try to set all the trucks up the same. I don't know if you heard that with the radio going, sorry. Um, so there's three types of extinguishers that we use, we carry. Uh, these can extinguish incipient fires um, or fires when they just start get going, smaller fires. Uh, we can use, this is what we call a water can here, just filled with water, two and a half gallons of water. This can extinguish a fire. Um, we have a CO2, which is, uh, can be used to extinguish a BC fire, which is like an electrical fire or uh, fuel. And this right here, this is an ABC dry chem extinguisher. It can extinguish an ABC type fire, which is just ordinary combustibles, um, electrical, and it's, uh, it comes off as like a, uh, as a uh, dry chem, it's like a powder substance. So we take these in, if we know we have a smaller fire, we can put it out quick. These are great, great tools to have. Uh, I talked about earlier about vehicle stabilization. We have these vehicle struts here, they're called Rescue 42 struts. They can, um, if a vehicle's on its side, if it's on its roof, if it's up against a tree, if it's up against a building, and we need to extricate. These stabilization kits are um, crucial to the safety of everyone there. Um, they can maintain a certain weight depending on the size of the, uh, of the strut. Our other truck that responds to all the motor vehicle has Motor vehicle accidents has larger struts as well. These are kind of these are the average size here, but if we have to have a larger vehicle, a box truck, a large oil truck, maybe um, we have all all shapes and sizes. So you kind of have to pick the one for the right scene. And these right here, this is just the uh, ratchet straps that come with it. So you secure the strut to the car, and essentially that just creates um, creates a point where the vehicle no longer will tip or uh, rotate on the uh, any further than what it's already at. Uh, these are what we call dry chem, so ABC, the extinguisher over there that we just talked about. So uh, we use these. I know they look kind of funny in a plastic bag, but it's filled with dry chem extinguisher. So if we have to go to say a chimney fire, we can drop these down the chimney. Um, if the chimney fire is going, um, burning rapidly, uh, this can kind of control the chimney fire until we get up to the top of the chimney to um, run either the chains down or kind of uh, extinguish the uh, extinguish the fire depending on what method we're going to use but that just helps keep the fire in check or may even put it out in a chimney so that's mainly like winter time uh, operations so as I mentioned uh, we do I'd say between 1,800 to 2,000 medical emergencies a year in this town. Uh, we do serve other towns, neighboring towns, Concord, uh, Boxborough, Littleton, Mutual Aid, and they return the favor. Uh, that's kind of how that works. So um, we do provide probably, like I said, 18 to 2,000 medicals a year. We have medical equipment on the trucks. So this is our first in bag here, which we carry basic uh, first aid supplies. Uh, we can check sugars with a glucometer in here for diabetics. Uh, and we carry EpiPens here for an adult and PD. And if for some reason we suspect a drug overdose, um, nasal Narcan, we have this, we carry this on all of the apparatus as well. So we carry oxygen if the patient's having difficulty breathing. Uh, we can administer albuterol, so depending on what the nature of the call is, we can pretty much handle it. If there's severe bleeding that needs to be controlled, 
There are, uh, there's big trauma uh, dressings in here as well. We can take vital signs such as blood pressure, um, blood sugar levels, oxygen levels, heart rates. So whatever the nature of the call is, kind of depends on what, what route we go in in this bag. This is a portable light. Um, as I mentioned, fire service is big now. Um, it's kind of growing in popularity with battery power. So this is a light that comes off the truck. We can set it up instead of having to put the generator on and pull the cord in the house. If there's somewhere in the house where we suspect origin of fire or need to investigate more, we can bring that light in. It will light up the whole room. Uh, it's all LED powered. So it just assists us with uh, being able to see better at night. And um, it can be used inside, outside, cold, hot, whatever the uh, temperature is. It's fully functional. Um, as I mentioned with medicals, we do carry um, AEDs, which is a defibrillator. So if we, uh, it has adult pads and PD pads, which hopefully we don't have to use, but if need be, we can. Uh, so it has the pads right here. And. Um, if we have to shave the chest, we can. We have razors. Um, if we have to cut the clothing off to expose the chest to stick these pads, we have trauma shears. Um, if the patient's wet, maybe they were swimming and it's a drowning, we have a towel here. And this right here is the control that'll tell you how to uh, proceed from there after you put the pads on and turn the power on. Uh, the department does offer CPR and AED classes. I, greatly urge you to uh, contact the department if you would like to learn uh, CPR AED, you or your business. It's a great opportunity uh, to give back to your community and learn some, learn a great uh, great skill that can uh, potentially be life-saving. So contact the department and we'll teach you CPR. And some other stuff in here as well. Um, this is what we call our four gas meter here. So you start it outside before you go in. It detects CO, lower explosive limit, LEL, oxygen, and hydrogen sulfide, H2S. So by starting it out here, it gives it a clear calibration and good air. And um, this was, gets used at CO alarms. Um, after a fire is extinguished, we want to make sure there's no CO that could potentially harm our firefighters in there doing overhaul or uh, salvage, that we want to make sure that we monitor the building, um, monitor the building, make sure that we have good oxygen levels, we have no carbon monoxide, we have no hydrogen sulfide, and the building's essentially not going to explode. It's not uh, in the right limits. So this is what it should look like um, when, it's, uh, when it's good. These get calibrated once a month. So if you ever have your CO alarm going off, if you ever have your smoke alarm going off, always call us. We'll come down, we'll check the residence, we'll meter the residence, and we'll make sure that there's no carbon monoxide in your house. I will say if you do have a carbon monoxide activation, don't open the windows. Um, if you can, ev evacuate, leave the house as is, evacuate. That way when we get there, we can determine the source, if there was a source of the CO. If you do open the windows prior to our arrival, now um, that gas has essentially escaped the house and we have a uh, harder time trying to pinpoint where, where the, uh, the CO originated from. So um, that's pretty much that. Uh, we bring this on all the calls and for EMS calls, we have, uh, we have one of these on the bag. It's just for CO just to make sure if someone's presenting with lightheaded, dizziness, uh, CO symptoms, that it's not a carbon monoxide emergency in the house as well. So we can detect that just by having the meter on our uh, medical bag. So I'll shut this off. And right here, we have um, 100, 300 foot rope bags for water rescue, um, ice rescue in the winter. Whatever the emergency may be, we're going to have um, a wetsuit, which is in the uh, back of the cab. So we can put the wetsuit on and we'll tie the rope off to us. And then we'll tie the rope to the patient when they're in the water, just so uh, we always maintain contact with the rope tender on the, in, on the land and the, uh, whether it's the patient or the rescuer 
out in the water. Uh, we carry this right here. This is our kind of our MCI, mass casualty incidents. So um, when, if we were coming across a large accident on Route 2 or a uh, chemical incident maybe at one of the uh, manufacturing buildings in town and we need to determine the level of severity, green, yellow, red, and black um, are the colors we use. So if someone from another town comes in, if doctors show up, we all know what these colors mean. So uh, green is like kind of your walking wounded and yellow is moderate to severe, red is life-threatening, and black is deceased. So we carry this on the truck just in case if we need to start triaging, it's called, kind of determining the level of severity of the patients. This is kind of, this is our bag just to get us going until other companies start arriving. This is the other side of the pump panel. So on the other side of the truck is where we had different um, discharges and intakes for the pump. This is the same thing as that side, just on the other side of the truck. Um, and then this is our generator, on the, which we saw on the pump panel side. This is a box here where we can start the generator. And if we need to have portable power, we can just connect extension cords to here and run lights, tools, whatever the need may be. Pretty much this uh, area. Uh, we do have compartments on the top of the truck as well. We won't go up there just for uh, time's sake, but uh, if we need to uh, put more speedy dry bags, uh, more foam, we can put them up there. Uh, there's a Stokes basket in the truck as well, so if we have extended carry out, say, um, in the field at Narrow Park in the winter time, uh, one of the jogging, hiking trails, there's so many across town. If we need to access um, a dirt bike accident in the woods, we can use our Stokes basket, which is just a big, big basket to put the patient in. And then we can utilize our companies to extricate the patient carrying the uh, Stokes basket. Okay, so now we're in the inside of the uh, cab here, portion of the truck. As I had mentioned, it's a five person cab. Usually, obviously, we have the driver here. The front seat there is for our officer. And depending on the staffing of the day, it will depend on the level of, um, level of uh, firefighters in the back of the truck here. So um, as I had mentioned, uh, the SCBA is right here. Each seat has an SCBA and it's released by this yellow handle here. So if you push this up, this SCBA will release and that way it allows you to have the pack on when you exit the truck and you're ready to fight the fire and you just have to mask up with your face piece here, which each riding seat has its face piece. And during the year we're required uh, to do a fit test as well to make sure that we have the right face piece that fits our, our face essentially. Uh, so that way there's no air leaks, you're not gonna get any hazardous environment inside of your mask because you've been fit tested and you have the right size to, uh, to fit your face and um, maintain level of safety and prevent any carcinogens from coming into, uh, into your uh, face, facial area. So there's seat belts at each of the trucks. Um, so we have a seat belt um, with the extender here, which helps uh, when we have all our gear on, we're a lot bigger. So we uh, have a seat belt here and we have a seat belt monitor in the front there. So the officer can tell if someone's not wearing their seat belt, there'll be a seat belt alarm that goes off. Um, there is flashlights in the truck as well. So if you need to bring a flashlight, which helps in uh, reduce profile environments, which helps when it's dark, which helps when there's uh, smoke and you can't see from me to you away. Um, you always want to make sure you have a flashlight. We are lucky that we um, each firefighter has their own light at, um, issued to them. Um, however, if the battery runs out or you need to recharge it, we do have the charging ports as well. Uh, we do have tools in the truck, similar to the rear compartment. Uh, we have this Boston hook here is what it's called. Um, and we have another tool here, which is like a multi-purpose tool. It can be used as a 
this is a traffic vest. Um, it can be used for as a sledgehammer there, an axe. This Boston hook, the hook can pull down ceilings, open up walls. It can just assist us in extinguishing a fire in spots that we may not be able to uh, reach or uh, locate. So this is just my helmet. We put our gear in the truck, obviously. Uh, when we respond to medicals, our gear goes in the truck just in case we do have to divert to a, a fire emergency. These safety vests right here, each firefighter is required um, to wear these at traffic incidents. Uh, with the increased um, amount of uh, traffic on the roads these days, it's always good to have your vest on. That way you're noticeable to drivers driving by or at nighttime it's reflective as well so they can see you uh, and hopefully prevent any, uh, anyone from getting hit at the scene. So we have in the back here, uh, it's an AC unit here. So it's nice in this, uh, the summertime, obviously to stay cool, especially when we're going into uh, fires and medical emergencies with the uh, extreme heat that's been this summer. Radar to your left, sir, is the, uh, the ice rescue suit. So right here is uh, the Mustang Ice Commander suit, it's called. These essentially get us in the water. They keep us uh, from the cold water and the, uh, and the freezing temperatures. So if we need to do an ice rescue of whether it be a human or an animal, um, there's hooks on here as well, which allow us to put the hooks to the suit and go into the water. Uh, for anyone that's on the shore, they also have a, essentially, so a life jacket. They wear these on the shore as well, just in case um, something does happen and they're forced to go in the water to assist with uh, extrication. And there's a rope bag there as well. This is what we call a set of irons, which can be used for um, numerous tasks. Um, mainly forcible entry if we have to open up a door that's maybe locked or if we need to uh, just get places that you can't get to due to uh, whatever the conditions are that helps us. So if we want to uh, look at the front here as well so we have the uh, that blue camera that Bullard camera and to the left of it's a spare battery that's what we call our thermal imaging camera. And that essentially allows us to locate fires that may be in the wall, shows hot spots, uh, we may see something burning that we can't see. It can be used for search and rescue as well. So if we're assisting uh, PD with search and rescue, um, we can see that by the temperature there, if it's showing it's warm on the seat that someone might have been sitting in a vehicle um, we can see the, the, uh, the outline of a person as well. If they're in the woods, maybe laying on the ground, um, it'll show the heat signature and it'll show the shape of a person. So that helps us um, in detecting fires, but it also allows us uh, to assist other agencies as well with other tasks. Um, we do have the green radio there. That's a Motorola radio. That allows us to talk to fire alarm. Uh, that allows us to talk to other towns, other agencies. So that's vitally important when we're going mutual aid or even when we're going to calls in town. If we have to talk to whoever it may be, um, that's how we do it right there. And above that's a siren. And we have climate controls to the left. We can turn all our lights on, our generator lights. And this right here is our map box. Um, so there's different maps of areas of town. There's emergency response guide for hazmat. There's a NIOSH guidebook here. Um, it's all just a uh, more of a hazmat situation here. So if you roll up on a situation with a uh, shaped tank or a hazmat number, you can look these up in these uh, books here. Uh, and that's pretty much a. Uh, that's pretty much the cab here if we need to. Uh, so every Tuesday on the fire department is uh, truck check day is what we call it. So we check all the fluids of the truck. Here's an access door, which allows us to check the engine oil, transmission fluid, power steering. It all is right here versus having to, if we need to, we can put the cab of the truck up. But 
if it's all right here, it's a lot safer to keep the cab down. And you can see essentially what, uh, what the levels are, if we need to add oil, if we need to add fluid. That's what this access door does. And other than that, uh, that's, so that's the truck, that's engine 21. I'd like to thank you very much for uh, watching this video. I hope you guys learned something. And um, I'd like to thank the town, the town administration, uh, the fire administration, the townspeople for supporting this, this new purchase. Um, it's greatly appreciated by the fire department. And hope everyone has a great year. And the tone's going off now, so take care. Have a good day. Oh,